Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Wyatt Paints, and today I'll be painting Modoc from C27 Studios. Real quick, I'd like to take a moment to ask if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button, and if you're returning, be sure to hit the like button so more people can find these videos. Let's get started. Unfortunately, I'm still figuring out this new camera, and I had the digital soup on, so I apologize if it's a bit hard to see. Hopefully, you'll be able to follow along well enough. I have been an off and on patron of C27 for a while now, and I am super hyped to get a new scope of Modoc, and C27 did not disappoint here. His face is nice and craggy, and he's got plenty of murder tentacles. To start him off working inside out, I tackled his face. Since I knew I wanted his body and chair to be a classic orangey gold, I wanted his face to contrast this and be a cooler tone, so I made a 50-50 mix of P3 Bad Brews and Midland Flesh. Having a purple undertone will give his face an otherworldly shade to it, and since most skin tones have some sort of pink and purple, it won't be too far off from normal. While this dried, I decided to base his gums in P3 Sanguine and then made a quick highlight by mixing some of the Midland Flesh in. With details this small, blends really aren't necessary. Now that the skin base coat was dry, I mixed a bit more of the Midland Flesh, more of a 75-25% mix for the first highlight. Like most starting highlights, this is going to cover most of the face. The idea here is that the base layer is just going to be more of an outline of all of his main features. I did keep a bit of that starting tone, just in case I made a mistake and I needed to retouch the shadow. To finish off his skin, I moved on to using pure Midland Flesh with a bit of water mixed in to thin it down. I focused this on the areas I really wanted to pop and draw the eyes. I gave extra care here as the highlight really ties together the other two layers and establishes a gradient. To finish off his face, a few final details needed to be done. His teeth got a coat of Menoth White. This is my go-to color as it's a very average tone and it's easy to either dirty up or brighten. In Modoc's case, it was dirty time, so I gave his whole mouth an earth shade wash. This did double duty by normalizing the transition in his gums and getting some separation in between his teeth. To finish his teeth, I gave each tooth a touch of the Menoth towards the edge. Finally, I gave him some dabs of white for his eyes. No need to try to get extra fancy for his pupils, as his eyes are tiny and very recessed. Now to handle his body and chair. I wanted this to have a comic book feel without having to do cell shading, which calls for bold colors. I started this with a base of P3 Infernal Orange. Now, orange is one of my banes as it's notoriously bad for coverage, but thankfully for you, you can skip the four coats it took to get the coverage I was happy with. To be honest, it wasn't too bad. I have my podcast going. The key thing to remember here though is to give plenty of time between layers to dry or you'll be undoing your previous work. And not only will it take longer, worse, it'll start making a clumpy texture, which won't look good on your model. After many layers, I was ready for our next color, Ember Orange. Since this is similar to Inferno, but just a bit less saturated, I didn't bother mixing an intermediate color and just thinned it down a bit. I put this on the upturned surfaces with my strokes pulling towards the edge, so a majority of the pigment would end up there. On the mostly vertical surfaces, I had to decide where I want my highest highlights to be and have my strokes starting from the shadow moving toward where I want those highlights. Again, this is to control the pigment as a majority of the pigment will end up wherever my stroke ends. This only took a few coats to establish the tone, even with a thin down paint. For the final highlight, I jumped straight to P3 Cygnus Yellow. And as before, since I was thinning down my paint so much, I didn't bother mixing an in-between tone. I used this to push areas I wanted the brightest highlight. I used some edge highlights highlighting without getting tedious because like I've said before less is more with edge highlighting to me it just eats way too much time and as somebody that gets frequent hand cramps and shakes it's best to keep them at a minimum I followed this with taking care of his mental gem I gave it a base coat of Vallejo Bloody Red, but then decided that was a bit too bright and went over it with Scarlet Red. This is fine because when it comes to the gems, there are so many reflections that the extra variations in tone just helps sell the look. As Bob Ross would say, happy accidents. I then went back to the Bloody Red for a highlight and then I topped this with a Titanium White for the light glint. Once again, I found that this was a bit too bright, so I gave it a glaze of bloody red to tone it all down. I ended up liking this more because while the gem is a focal point, I didn't want it to be the focal point and pull attention away from his nice craggy face. 
Now it's time to address those limbs of his. I gave each a coat and bad bruise. I feel if you can use a color you already used somewhere else on the model, it's better than breaking out a new one. Too many colors end up making the final model look a bit too busy. I then mix a bit of white in this to make a simple highlight. I only put this on his fingers, legs, knees, and toes. It really doesn't take too much to sell a bit of death. And like before, I didn't want to distract too much attention from the face. For Modoc's hair, I based it in bootstrap brown. And then, for the first time on this model, I gave it an all-over wash to shade between the strands. This is something I avoided elsewhere, mainly because I wanted to keep the vibrancy of my colors, as washes, well, can wash them out. As with his limbs, I mixed a bit of white to make a simple one-step highlight for his hair. I tried to give him a halo highlight here, as an all-over highlight on hair looks super weird to me. To do this, I focused the highlight in the halfway point between the edge and the center of his cowlick. This seemed like the right time to work on his base. Since I had primed him in gray, I left that as the darkest shade and just highlighted from there starting with cold gray in rough slapdash strokes. I focused this from the top down, getting lighter as I went. I then followed this up with stonewall gray while it was still wet to get a natural blend working for me. And I made sure to try to get good coverage on all the large smoke plumes. Once this was dry, I did a heavy dry brush of P3 Frostbite and then a final light dry brush of Titanium Light to finish the look. Going back to Modoc, it was time to hit up the smaller details to break up all that orange. I did this with Army Painter Shiny Silver. Not much to say here, I just stayed within the lines until I was done. Next, I had to address his jet plume. I had the idea of doing a fire jet that faded from yellow to orange and then red, but after a while, I just wasn't liking it. Way too much yellow on this model. So I rolled the dice with a light blue plume and painted it using the same frostbite that I used on the smoke. Personally, I think I made the winning choice. The last detail to take care of is what I'm going to be calling his murder arms. A super simple but good look for this is to base them in black and dry brush in metallic. There was a minute I thought about doing this in a gold to tie it in with the yellows of the chair, but I felt this steel look would look better. After final assembly, Modoc was ready to hit the table. I hope you enjoyed this guy. It feels like I sorted out my camera issues about halfway through, so hopefully my next video will be nice and crispy. If you'd like to check out C27 Studios, a link to their Patreon will be in the details below. And if you'd like to support this channel, the best way you can do it is by hitting that like and subscribe button. And if you're feeling extra silly, you can leave a comment on what you'd like to see painted next. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.